Hello everyone. I just want to give you an update video of what I'm thinking about at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. And I thought it would be interesting to try adding a wind turbine to the solar powered scooter. So the solar panels have worked very well and I've been able to ride the scooter all day with the sun shining and keeping the scooter charged. And for those of you that have been following the project, <coughs> excuse me, you would see that um, I've kind of given some glimpses into what that project has been. And uh, it's worked very well. And we want to move towards um, larger solar panels just to have some extra energy. Uh, but it's been working great. And so we're thinking, what's another way that we can charge the scooter, right? And wind power. So wind and solar are both very popular. And here's a little, they call it a vertical axis wind turbine, I think is the name of it. So I purchased one of these just to test. And what was really interesting was, uh, for one thing, this turbine, which I have the, these are the parts to it, here. These are the parts. And this is, I wanted to open it up right away to see what was inside. And I saw these really powerful magnets. So these go together like this. Oops. Now I'm not going to be able to get it apart. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's all stuck together. There it goes. Okay, so I separated these two. Very strong magnets. And what goes inside between those two is these, you can see the coils of wire inside here. See the coils of wire? Coils of copper wire. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve magnets on each side. It looks like it's positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way around on both sides. And what was interesting about this is on the the Weehu trailer. The Wii Who, I think the model is iGo, had uh, mounting brackets that hold a, this is a cargo trailer, and, and the mounting brackets hold the piece of wood here. I never put that on. Um, I had solar panels mounted to this trailer, and those are behind me. I can show you those in a minute. But uh, I want to put a wind turbine on this, and I want to see how that, because many days I'm riding the scooter, the wind can be very strong. And sometimes the wind is blowing from behind me, and that would be pushing me forward. Uh, so if it's blowing behind me and pushing me forward, having this wind turbine would actually act as a sail, both generating power and helping me move forward. Now if it's the winds, if I'm heading into the wind, I'll have to see how that goes with testing. I'll have to just see how that, how that works out. But what's interesting here is that these brackets actually bolt right onto this wind turbine. See the hole? It fit perfectly. I already had it on there. And the wires come through the center hole there. So I just wanted to give a brief update of what my thoughts are on this project. Many companies make uh, these vertical axis wind turbines. This is supposed to be a 300 watt wind turbine. Now, in the use that I'm going to be doing with this. I have a couple questions. I have a lot to learn. And this is really, this video is very much introductory, even to myself. Uh, I was questioning whether I should even make a video, but you know, I like sharing my initial thoughts with projects that end up becoming uh, in what I think of as being very advanced later. So I'm kind of documenting some of my early thoughts right now, because this is just beginning with the wind turbine. Uh, by the way, the wind turbine is about 44 inches tall, so it's going to go up to about right here. You can see the bar there. That's the, the height of it, of that bar that's going to go sit on top of this. And um, 
uh, I often ride the scooter in Santa Monica. There's a, a there's many. Uh, my, they call them micro mobility, <laughs> where basically scooters and electric skateboards and uh, electric bikes. Everybody shares these these lanes, and uh, that's where I ride the scooter a lot. And I ride it in different areas. And um, that's the scooter there, Xiaomi Mijia M365, working very well. So anyway, um, just kind of an update. It came with this. This is the equipment that the the uh, turbine came with. It came with this here. I added this so I can measure power with my watts up meter. Um, but those are the initial thoughts and I'll just document the journey of, of what the what I conclude with this and, and the progress of learning, the journey of learning. But the way this works is this goes in here and it sits. These copper wires, I don't see any iron I don't think there's any iron in here. In fact, let's find out. Let's find out if there's any iron in there at all. Because that seems like it might just be copper. Um, let's see. I have a magnet. This is a little magnet here. Let's see. No, there's no... See this? Look. There's no iron in there. That's just copper wire. Wow. I mean, that's new to me. I... I I'm used to seeing iron with generators, but I do know that when I powered a light bulb with this, when I spun this generator by hand, when it was all together, just with the pole, and I spun it, and I had the this controller, I think it's called, I think this is called a controller, I'm still learning of the terminology, apologies. I had this connected to the watts up meter, so this converts to AC, this is three phase AC, this can, so there's three wires coming out. You can see them here. There's three wires coming out. And that goes into here. It goes into these, these three, okay, in any order, from what I understand. And then the out comes red and black, positive and negative. Those were connecting to my, let's see, source. This is the source side of the Watts Up meter. I bought this on Amazon. Um, bought the... I bought this on eBay. So, and this is load, this side's load over here. And that went to a light bulb, and I was powering a light bulb. Let's see the light bulb I was using, just for initial testing. I was using this one 12 volts, 35 watts. So I was spinning this by hand, lighting this bulb up. And um, when I did that, this became hard to turn. And actually, Ellery, yeah. could we briefly mention the one wire idea? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna mention that something that we were, uh, my girlfriend and I were collaborating on. Um, we're thinking about the Rick Friedrich circuits, so we can briefly show you. And yes, we're reading Tom Bearden. <laughs> so the conversation began with Rick Friedrich circuits and we're trying to think about sharing what's it called? Loving Giving Path yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Loving Giving Path how can we apply this to the circuit of the wind turbine? That's some thoughts we had well actually, kind of what I was thinking about was, I was trying to kind of go back more to like Nikola Tesla and his one wire um, configuration so I was just thinking about oh. how but it does also build on this too it's kind of similar um, we have to test it out um, we haven't tried this yet but I was just thinking um, well Joseph was explaining that with the wind turbine what was happening was uh, you were trying it out right mm -hmm. and you were noticing that when you were uh, I think it was when you were hooking up the light bulb that you were it was harder to turn that's correct um, and traditional um, Physics, I think, just kind of says that, you know, when something's under a load, then it's harder to turn, so it just kind of, like, makes sense. But um, I think when you look at more of the free-flowing um, ways of utilizing energy, that I don't know if that's always the case. So I was just curious what might happen if we try, instead of um, essentially shorting out the circuit, so killing the dipole by having the 
um, the positive and the negative with something in between connected. Because what that's, what that's doing is it's, it is killing the dipole. Um, if you think along the lines of Tom Bearden and Rick Friedrich. Um, so I was, I was curious what might happen if we try just hooking up one wire. And I was thinking initially if we could just try uh, if the wind, binds, uh, uh, wind turbine, if it's spinning, and we take the positive and hook it up to the positive of, say, just like a motor, just to test it out and see if that would work. Or possibly the positive of the wind turbine to the negative of the motor. Just experimenting and see if just a one wire configuration with the free flowing energy from the wind, if that would be enough to power the uh, whatever we want to power without killing the dipole. So. Without shorting it, right? Yeah, without shorting that out. And then what we're referring to is so this is going to go back inside here three wires coming out, those three wires go to this here, three wires, positive and negative are coming out, and when those wires power a load, this becomes harder to turn. And so we're thinking, if we use the loving giving path, which we've learned about from Rick Friedrich, among others that are experimenting with it, with that circuit, um, would there be a way of powering the circuit where this stays fairly easy to spin? It's just an idea. Uh, either way, though, even if that does not work, we're still excited about the possibilities of keeping the battery charged in the scooter, not just with solar, but also with wind. Why? Because what happens when, when the sun sets and we still want to ride the scooter? Well, the wind's always blowing, and especially if the scooter's moving, and I still have to learn this, but it makes logical sense to me, but I could be wrong. If, I'm, if there's no wind movement at all, and I'm going 10 miles an hour, is that a 10 mile per hour wind? It's a thought. If it is, then that can spin this just by the motion of the scooter and generate some power. We'll see though, testing will tell us, but oftentimes there is wind and there is a breeze and we wanna see what we can do with that. It's just an idea. So just sharing with you the, the uh, vertical axis wind turbine, if you wanna research those, they have many names. I think one of the names are Helix. Uh, a helix turbine and there's as far as like the configuration of how the power is being generated is with these coils which I think is called axial flux axial flux generator and I may be saying that wrong so please confirm for yourself anyway have a great day everyone let me just check to see is there anything else you wanted to say or were you done um, well, I thought I should mention, uh, just real quick before we go, we did update the website. I know it's been um, a little bit out of date with the videos and whatnot on there, so you can go check it out. got um, some new things on there, and we also have a donate button on there, so if you like these projects and you uh, want to support us financially in that way, um, you are welcome to. So take a, uh, take a look at it's truezeroemissions.org. You can check it out. And we hope to see you in our next video. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And just thank you for watching this video, everyone. That's really, to me, that's great support. Um, have a great day, and we'll see you in future videos. I'm really excited about sharing this project once we get the wind turbine connected and actually get it out there in the wind. How's that sound? Pretty good? All right, have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.